Cinema Sins has a fan club. It's called the Sin Club, and members get all sorts of things like early episodes, bonus videos, merch discounts, and even monthly bonus podcasts. Membership starts at three dollars a month, and you can sign up now at patreon.com slash cinema sins. I'm gonna be able to just get whatever I want. And yeah, you're like you're like, out. where's my CEO offer coming up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined by Barrett Sher. Hello. And Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. Today we have a very special guest. It is director Seth Savoy. Yeah, who has done a movie called Echo Boomers. Uh, it's coming out on demand and digital uh, November 13th. Seth, welcome. Hey, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, you, yeah, I know that there's a couple of other writers on this story and everything, but what was sort of the inspiration uh, for, for you making this movie? Yeah, you know, I graduated uh, from film school in 2013 and... Uh, I kind of felt this pressure of, you know, creating your your first work, and I spent a hefty amount of savings going to film school, and I got to the finish line, and uh, I realized that there was no shortage of filmmakers. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I was nervous about it, you know, like I, I feel like a lot of artists are, and kind of serendipitously enough, I came across these headlines in Chicago newspapers about um, these group of college kids that were breaking into these homes, and like funny enough, I could understand their frustration on like a personal <laughs> level <laughs> and um and you know i could just get it like there was this angst and rage because they they did everything that they were supposed to do and then they got to the finish line and nothing was there and uh so i just kind of took that and ran with it and it and it turned into echo boomers yeah uh that's uh that's sort of a a theme that you hear that you see sort of pounded in is the is is people doing all the things that they feel like they have been told that they need to do. And they've done that. They've got the good grades and everything. And then, and then when they graduate, they realize that getting a job is really tough. I had the same sort of uh, experience myself when I went out, got out of college, I was like, yeah, all right. Now I've got this mass communications, radio, television production degree. I'm going to be able to just get whatever I want. And yeah, you're like, you're like, out. where's my CEO offer coming? Up? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, that's right before Chris uh, started robbing expensive houses. Too, right. So. Right. See, I got away with it though. I was smart. Um, but, uh, but no, I, that sort of, I, I, I think a lot of people can relate to that though. The, the, just the idea of, uh, getting out of college and then realizing that hey that degree doesn't really get you anything you have to really right. do a lot you have to have a lot of luck right um so okay so you gotta you have a you have an interesting cast here uh you have patrick schwarzenegger who is a doppelganger for his dad and <laughs> uh you have you have alex pettifer who's always like i mean he's just disgustingly good looking and, uh, and menacing too in this yes, and menacing and uh you know populate this uh team of of uh of of, of robbers uh you know pretty well and then of course michael shannon uh okay tell me what was the casting process for this and i need to know what it's like working with michael shannon yeah yeah sure so like um one thing that that i'll never forget that this old director named john d hancock taught me was that um casting is 80 percent of a director's job like mm -hmm. if you get that right your job is just tremendously easy and i didn't quite understand that until you're on set watching michael shannon do it right because <laughs> then <laughs> yeah. you're like oh yeah i don't he's do you know he he understands the character so much i don't have to really you know give him any sculpting he's great and mm -hmm. so um it took a long time to find that cast and so it took like three years no, to wow. really find the cast that I was like head over heels for. Um, and Mike was the first one to jump on and his team found the script and loved the message behind it and thought that it was extremely relevant. And, um, and then the others slowly started to trickle in. I met with Patrick and I felt like Patrick hadn't had this opportunity that really 
you know, showed his skills. You know, he did mm. that movie Midnight Sun, which was a high school love movie. You know, mm. and now he has this chance to like really show something great, and he kills it in the movie. And I really believe that in the next two years, I'm sure right after Echo comes out, you know, he'll be in one of those superhero movies with the cape on, and they're gonna sweep him up in the superhero <laughs> world. You know, <laughs> you're not kidding. That was my no. first thought when I saw this guy. It, this guy could play Superman in his sleep. Uh, he's, yeah, he's just so perfect looking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, the rest of the cast is amazing. There's, you know, the kid who plays Jack. Um, his name is Gillis Geary. He's unbelievable. I think he's he's on the level of any anyone else. He's on Mike's level. He's unbelievable. Um, but um, yeah, the casting process was honestly a little rough, just because I wanted to be in love with the the actors who played him, and luckily I waited. So. Um... So this is shot. This is this is shot uh, around Chicago. Is this the Chicago suburbs? And it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Nice. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't answer your question about working with Mike either. Um, oh yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. I mean, just as like a first timer, it's just kind of funny to to go on a set with someone who's done this a million times. You know. Mm-hmm. And there was and there was like this kind of nervousness because of it. Yeah. Um, but he, he honestly was so patient with me, which I think said a lot as him as an artist that he really trusted me. And he kind of let me explore and find my voice, which really meant a lot. And, and like maybe this is my imagination, but, you know, there was this feel of that he cared about me as an artist just because I cared about him as an artist. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that he, just helped sorry. us, you know. Yeah, I, I you just get this sense that he's he's super. I mean, I know he's not like this because I've seen him in interviews and 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 other things. But you just get this sense that he's always this intense, right? Like, right. I, I I think I would I think I would uh, be on guard uh, meeting meeting with him and thinking that there's going to be <laughs> something you know uh, some a better a better uh, act appropriately or else he's going to he's going to just unleash the michael shannon on me you know right right well that's the that's the power of his character in this movie is that until a certain point you, you don't know how dangerous he actually is i mean he's he could be you know kind of a pussycat with with all bark and no bite uh to paraphrase later in the movie or he could really be dangerous, but he's so menacing that you don't want to find out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and you and you and you mentioned is it Gillis Gary? Is his That's name? his name. Yeah, Gillis. Yeah, Gary. yeah. He's he's another. I mean, yeah. I had not. I don't think I'd seen him before. Um, and maybe I, maybe I did. I don't know. But this is definitely uh, a, a memorable uh, performance for him. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, I agree. This is uh, some some pretty good uh, uh, finds that you got for this cast. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of newcomers, but a lot of people who are really bringing their game. Yeah, we were looking at it as kind of like, you know, once we got Mike, it was this idea of let's find the next generation of unbelievable actors like Michael Shannon. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we did a pretty good job of, of collecting this group. It'll be interesting, you know, to jump 10 years in time and see where these guys are. But, I mean, they're all going to be heavy hitters, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, let so, me yeah. piggyback off of Chris's question. Because this movie is Chicago as fuck. And I love it. <laughs> because I love everything about Chicago. Um, what were some of the, the main locations? Did you actually go out to the suburbs? um and and film those gorgeous mansions uh how much was it in the city that kind of thing yeah i don't i don't want to i don't want to ruin it for you <laughs> um, <laughs> but but uh the houses were actually salt lake city oh, oh no, that's okay. yeah, i know i know but but everything else was pretty much chicago but um but dude chicago had such an important role in this movie like yeah. looking back on it you know first off mike and his team being from chicago and then Chicago Media Angels, which is a, a group of investors, was a big player. Um, the Chicago right. Film Office just, you know, they made sure that everything was good at Union Station for me. And just like these nice. kind of iconic locations, they're just like, yo, Seth, we got you, man. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, and then and in addition, uh, you have Leslie Ann Warren in here. Mm-hmm. That's another one that uh, that was a surprise to see. In this yeah, movie. I was really curious how she became involved. Yeah, you know, because that was our... Um, you know that from a producing perspective that was like our one day player you know Mm -hmm. and so uh 
the producers brought up Leslie Ann Warren because they had a connection to her. And then when I checked out of work, I just didn't, me being just, I'm 28, so I'm, I'm younger for sure. But I just didn't realize Leslie Ann's kind of impact on cinema just because I was mm-hmm. younger. And then once I watched it, I was like, holy shit, like, yeah, let's do it. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. And she and she was just uh, such an angel to work with. I can I can see why she's, you know, she is who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, so what was so? Here's a a thing. Uh, it, this is, I think, this is something that's sort of unique to, uh, you know, house robbery movie uh, uh, type of thing. You you go into depth into why each individual is in into this thing. Uh, you know, somebody does it because, you know, uh, didn't have a good relationship with their parents and you have another one who's doing it just for the thrill and everything. Was this something that you were gathering from the actual sort of news stories or was this something that you, you wanted to add in as sort of a motivation for this? Yeah, it's something I definitely wanted to add. <clears throat> you know, I, I wanted to bring up this kind of theme in the movie of everyone kind of being a product of their environment. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that did a really good job of that. And it, and weirdly enough, you start to care for these characters. And, and a big just kind of reason for the film is I wanted to ask the audience, if you were in their shoes, would you really do it? Like, I know that everyone would be like, no, 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 that's awful. I would never do it. But I think a lot more people would do this than you think. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. So, like, yeah, like I want people to look and ask themselves personally, like, I don't have to hear your answer would you do it? <laughs> you know, because yeah. I think a lot of people it's, be like, ah, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, not only is it easy money, quote unquote, but also, and I have to ask you this in a practical sense, the the joy that they get from smashing all that shit, that must have been <laughs> just, how much shit did you smash in this movie? <laughs> Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and what, what, <laughs> uh, you know, what's funny, too, is is we um, so those those days were on uh, stage because I'm a really big just supporter of you shoot everything on set. And the yeah. producers were like, Seth, what are you, you you're going to fuck up this guy's house. What are you talking about? You want to shoot this on set? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, and so we did it on a stage and. I really, and maybe this is like kind of my own uh, uh, just kind of mentality coming out. I thought the actors would have a ball destroying this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got on set and like some of them did. And then some of them had this feeling of like after they did it. Like they just did something horrible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just kind of interesting. Well, well, some of the guys, you know, we'd call action. I'd be like, how'd that feel? And he'd be like, I don't know. I kind of blacked out. It felt great. <laughs> 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 and then other ones were just like, I feel slimy. I feel gross. <laughs> I could see that because yeah, I mean, even though they're props, like it, the, the natural inclination is not to destroy things. Right, but man, yeah. It comes across as them being gleefully, especially uh, Patrick, um, it, just being absolutely into this, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it's just, uh, it's interesting because, like, you know, that energy of I'm destroying this. It's funny that those, or it's, it's, I guess it's their job, but it's interesting that they felt that energy of, like, yeah. this is wrong. This is gross, <laughs> which I thought was great. Did you get a couple of whacks at some things? Oh man, I loved it. <laughs> I loved everything about it. <laughs> um, what uh, what was your biggest challenge during making this movie? Ooh, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, we <laughs> we uh, shot way over. We we were originally mm-hmm. shooting twenty days. We ended up shooting twenty six. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything was worth it. Like everything was justifiable and. Uh, we ended up shooting in three different cities. We did Chicago for weeks and then Utah for a little bit and LA for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like the, the coordination of everything is just kind of a headache when you're just trying to like create a piece of art. But um, I really think it came together. Mm-hmm. It did. Yeah. And especially the, uh, the cast themselves, you know, we talked about them individually, but my favorite scenes in this movie, especially towards the beginning is, is them all together. 
um, it, whether they're doing their stuff to the, uh, the, during the robberies or hanging out. It's a great club slash drug scene in there. I'm so glad to see drugs back in uh, movies again. Movies, yeah. Yes, I want more drugs in my movies. Uh, <laughs> but, but they but they have a very good camaraderie amongst themselves, and you see that kind of splintering, uh, obviously, as the movie progresses. But when they're all one unit at the beginning, it's really exhilarating to watch. They must have gotten along, hopefully, in real life. They did, yeah. And you could you could see it on screen. There's there's this one scene yeah. specifically where Patrick does uh, does cocaine in the bathroom and he mm-hmm. gillis is there and this other character jacob alexander who's a phenomenal chicago actor just unbelievable mm-hmm. and and gillis was saying that he was uh he was concerned because in the scene you know it says that he laughs and all this stuff and gillis is like dude i can't just like fake laugh that's not I that's the one problem i have as an actor i just can't do it <laughs> and then we got in that bathroom and he's he's in there almost crying because it's no. just like the the camaraderie of the group in a bathroom stall is just hilarious. Nice. Um, yeah. Is that the yeah, one that has one. Is that the one that has the box that says do not do cocaine off of me? Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I I'm, well, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of my my favorite scene may be where the guy has to improvise uh in front of the uh, neighborhood <laughs> watch guy. Uh, yeah, was there you any don't sort know of where in- it's going. <laughs> yeah, was there any sort of inspiration for that, or did you, or was that just? Uh, how did that scene come about? Honestly, that uh, that day player that I had, um, he we he he uh, auditioned for a smaller role, mm-hmm. and he just as soon as I saw him, like this scene just popped in my head, and oh, I was really? like, oh my gosh, yeah, I was like, I don't know why I didn't think of that before. This guy's so perfect for it. And then that's, I wrote it the next day and casted him like two hours later. <laughs> oh my God. It kind of yeah. has a little bit, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's different, but it has a bit of a feel of like uh, the one in gross point blank where the guy's yeah. like going around <laughs> and, and uh, John Cusack is, uh, and, and, and uh, Jeremy Piven showing the house and then, and then this, uh, you know, rent a cop kind of guy shows up and starts asking him questions and everything. But, but in this one, yeah. there's a, like a real, there's like an actual real like uh there's stakes involved if he doesn't if he doesn't say, tell the story just so and uh and and it's funny like it, even it it's funny to me that somebody can make a lie that's so big and 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 it's so unbelievable and yet people just end up going well i guess you just don't know people you know? <laughs> oh and as as someone who lives in the suburbs that that scene would total that would totally work that yeah. would absolutely with my nosy neighbors yeah that oh, would work yeah. absolutely my house would be robbed oh that's a great scene because you don't know to me as a viewer i didn't know if if the guy was the actual owner of the house if yeah. he was letting on or that where this could actually go like he was leading him on but uh, when you do get that payoff of him saying, oh, all right, <laughs> you just like, oh, it's a great yeah. scene. Yeah, I, totally. I, I really wanted the movie to feel pretty unpredictable. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't yeah, want, you, yeah. want you to be able to predict where it was going. And even through the whole movie, you're like, there, there, there's not this money in a vault. That's fucking weird. There's no, like, eh, I don't know. And then, <laughs> so, like, it kind of, like, misdirections you a number of different times. But. Definitely. Definitely. The whole, the whole arc... I want to get into a couple of arcs, actually. The whole arc sure. with with Michael Shannon, not, not knowing how dangerous he is. Like when he uh, asked Lance to come over and talk with him, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if he's going to punch him. You don't know if he's going to threaten his mother or anything like that. Totally. Or, or if he's going to give him a pep talk or anything like that. So uh, the the way that he plays things close to the vest is is interesting to me. Um, and then it, you know, it comes to a head later on. Uh, and even then he doesn't do the predictable thing. And so, so he's really the wild card in this whole thing. Uh, was, was that written into the script? Is that part of the actual story is his character? It is. is. Yeah. It it was definitely something that we thought about because the Mm -hmm. idea behind Mike and, and this kind of sounds a little strange, but I think he's representing an older generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, he knows that all these younger guys are just wild cards, that they're just unpredictable. They're kind of shit shows. But at the end of the day, he's making them money. And so he I think he could easily see 
how quickly he could manipulate them yeah. just mm-hmm. by his presence. And, and obviously Mike did a great job doing that, but that was definitely in the script. And I think it plays really well. And it works. I mean, the, the way that he, it's, it's so funny because the way that he talks to Lance and, and gets his trust immediately, even calls him sir at some point. And, and, and then you start seeing him coming out of his shell because he's so reserved at the beginning of this movie. And by the end of it, he's essentially leading the charge. And uh, it's, it's, it's funny how one arc plays off of another arc, plays off of another one. Uh, could go sure. into Allie's yeah. arc, which is the, the most interesting one to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and with Patrick's too, we were, we were thinking of this idea of like running off of this kind of theme of your product, of your environment, but also like you are who you hang around right mm, mm. like you know birds of a feather type thing and and so like uh and so yeah it was just kind of this idea of patrick kind of slowly morphing into these people and slowly finding his footing in this group while ali is almost doing the exact opposite she's losing her footing in it she doesn't feel right. comfortable mm-hmm. um God, but her got- I, I i think so too her her arc is just great it's it's fantastic and it has a fantastic payoff by the way uh but uh, yeah the the fact that she's not just a common love interest right like, like she's not having to choose between two guys or anything she she's a fully realized character and you know the shot of her going back home and looking around her parents house and you know apologizing to them r- really speaks to you know, she really got into this almost by accident <laughs> and, and yeah. it seems yeah, like she wants to just it. move it, on. Yeah. And, and like, I think that shot that you're talking about of her looking around her house, she starts to realize that like the people that they're destroying their lives, their, her parents are no different. Right. Right. Which is, which is the sad part. Right. And I, I feel like that's the part of this movie that um, I wish I could have spent a little bit more time on. Mm. is like we're making this fun and flashy thing and they're busting these houses and they're stealing all this stuff and it's with cool music and stuff like that but like they're literally destroying someone's life yeah Yeah. which is so sad you know Mm. yeah i think she may have for me uh the most relatable scene in this movie when she uh she goes to that bar and meets up with her friends and uh start and and you know she she gives the sort of the caveat that you know they're they they're into different things uh she sits down and like they start talking about like their jobs and their and their kid they just had and and everything and and uh, you know she has she has nothing like that at all um uh and it's something that (laughs) me personally i have like dealt i've actually been in that kind of uh uh, you know, sort of discussion because I have a completely different life than a lot of the people that I would yeah. meet up with sure. from yeah, yeah. here, you know, however, like casually years ago or whatever. And, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it's a really interesting thing is, I mean, I guess she's a, she was an eyelash from being one of those people. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like that scene's you know, we've all been there, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. we've all been there and been like, shit, I don't I've really actually have maybe been at that bar. Where was where was that bar shot? That was Salt Lake. Yeah, oh, okay. I haven't been to that bar. <laughs> Everything it looked like thought. a Chicago bar, though. Yeah, I feel bad now. I feel like you know, I love that you had the Chicago image because that's what I want people to feel. But <laughs> no, how did uh, how did you end up in Salt Lake though for some of the shoes? It just just worked out the best for location. Yeah, it, it was mainly um, you know honestly Chicago is a, a pretty hard union town, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. You know, from a budget perspective, um, you know, we could make a movie that actually got a little bit more on screen um, if we did Salt Lake. And so we did pretty much half Salt Lake, half Chicago, just because I couldn't I couldn't abandon this Chicago feel. And the producers were like, I promise people won't be able to tell. Yeah. And maybe it was selfish of me, but I was like, I can tell <laughs> and it upsets me and I need it. And, uh, and, and I'm glad we did Chicago though. And I'm no, glad it can, feels like Chicago. 
Yeah, yeah, because I've been to Salt Lake a few times, and it, I mean, it's definitely a very, very different feel from Chicago. But yeah, I had no idea watching the movie that you had moved somewhere else. I, I was like Barrett; I thought it was just Chicago the whole time. I could have sworn they were drinking Malort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny we did throw in like all the Chicago beers. Yeah, they got yeah. Chicago shirts with beers on them, like. Yeah, he had the Revolution Brewing shirt on when he was going into to one of the houses, and <laughs> yeah. they're drinking old style. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, you definitely created that feeling. Sort of the magic of movies, right? Once you once uh, characters establish that they're in a certain city, then it, then the little you know side steps that they take in it and everything just become part of that city i mean there are obviously ones like rumble and rumble in the bronx that, that, don't, that don't don't quite hold up but like uh but like uh you know uh, in goodwill hunting they say you know they say they're in boston so you don't even see any of the toronto that's in there uh, right, when they're shooting right, it right. and everything so so yeah i mean it's uh it's a fun movie magic type of thing um, it was one of those the, uh, things, though, that when it didn't feel like Chicago, I definitely CGI'd in buildings, for sure. Mm, there were probably wow. 50 shots where I put buildings in the background. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Because, yeah, I mean, if it just doesn't feel right, then, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? Right. Um, right. Was there any sort of uh, particular research you did into uh, this kind of uh, – business at all uh did, did you have did you have any kind of uh foreknowledge going in it or did, or did you just say well this is how i think it would go and and you went with it. yeah it's kind of one of those things of like if you've ever lived in a gated community or, or if you you know if you deal with those nosy neighbors or things like that i feel like we all just kind of if if you think about it long enough this will sound really fucked up but if you think about it long enough you'll figure out how to break into houses <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, yeah for sure well i love yeah. how i love how the guy you know you see so many movies where the 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 old man with the safe refuses to give up the combination this guy immediately is like hey, yeah here it is man <laughs> <laughs> this is where you get, yeah. you get the sense that's how, how, how it would happen yeah yeah i think it would um anything else guys um yes um yeah. i want to know because this film has a very specific i think like tone and style what are some movies that influenced you just in general and then influenced how you shot this movie yeah so two really really big just influences in general on the script were because i really believe that a script and a and a movie are kind of two different art forms mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and um for the script two really big influences were um Ocean's Eleven, yeah, which yeah. just kind of has you know that that kind of fun feel to it, and Fight Club. Yeah, well, ah. dude, I was about to ask you that because <laughs> there, there were so many like uh, echoey kind of references to Fight Club in this movie. Yeah, yeah. So those were the two that really did it. But it, it, we really wanted the film to have like this kind of social media style of uh, presence, like content's always coming at you you know still frames you know quick mm -hmm. quick cuts all this kind of type of stuff to make it kind of feel like you're on social media mm -hmm. just to kind of mm -hmm. give it that feel which which i think uh i think it it definitely has but um yeah definitely fight club was probably one of the biggest influences well i was trying to give it a little bit of oceans 11 just so it didn't seem so serious you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> so it comes off as fun yeah yeah exactly you should have mm -hmm. just gotten Brad Pitt in this one and gotten it yeah. over with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Jonathan, do you have any questions? Um, no, I actually, going back, though, to the cast, we did mention the character of Allie, but we didn't really talk much about Haley Law. Um, my wife and I actually watch uh, Riverdale, so... Oh. So, we were so uh, we were acquainted with her on that as one of the one of the Pussycats, with Josie and the Pussycats. Um, uh, she's just a really... She's just a really cool actress, and she's just got, like, a... I don't know, she's got... It's like something's going on behind those eyes at all times. Um, uh, she's, yeah, you know, she, she, yeah, yeah. We we casted her like probably she was the only role that we kind of went into pre production not knowing who was going to play. Hmm. Um, hmm. And because we had a scheduling conflict right before, and so we were looking for a new actress, and Haley just there's something about her. 
that mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. she you're right you can see something going on behind her eyes and she's such an unbelievably cool person to work with um mm-hmm. because she understands the process and and once you start giving her the takes that she's she's asking for she kills it um so i'm really glad i'm really glad to hear hear that because she she busts her ass in this movie i think it shows yeah um, she, she is absolutely uh yeah there is something about her and i can't quite put my finger on it either it's uh it, it, she is she's uh, she definitely draws your attention yeah yeah uh okay anything else guys no i i literally had a blast with this movie i really yeah, enjoy it i wish you the best of luck with it uh movies like this don't get made very often anymore i don't think um and i i really really enjoyed it do you have anything uh coming down the pipeline you wanted to talk about or yeah i mean realistically i'm a big big story guy and so i've i've just been writing a ton of projects and kind of doing my own material while trying to read everything that anyone sends me but um i'm definitely working on a few things um i don't quite want to say yet but i think i got something big coming all right hey okay so you're doing okay. you're doing Drops. superman with patrick schwarzenegger yeah hey okay. all i need is a phone call hey michael shannon has some superman knowledge doesn't he yeah he does he does yeah yes. there's your connection <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i really enjoyed this guy guys and i'm glad that you guys enjoyed the movie i, I have like this uh a little bit of anxiety about it honestly like no like not a lot of people have seen it and mm-hmm. I haven't got a lot of reactions, so it's really refreshing to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it was fun yeah. to watch a lot. Well, of and and you know, dynamite for this being, and this is your film debut, right? This is your directorial is, yeah. feature debut. So I mean, is, dynamite yeah. for that. That I mean, you must be sort of like uh, uh, relieved yeah. and excited and anxious to to uh, to finally release this. And it, at twenty eight, you're killing it, dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, we would like to thank Seth Savoy for his time and uh, anytime, and, uh, man. Yeah, anytime. man. And uh, th- it, this was uh, this was great. Um, Echo Boomers comes out November thirteenth on demand and digital. Uh, that's going to do it for this interview. It's Chris Atkins and Barrett Share and Jonathan Watkins. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com.